this is not a plastic bottle, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So somebody has chosen to leave their bumper in a place where it would wash up here. This is the reason why at the Climate Change Division we have implemented the use of these kinds of bottles. You look around, you see all the plastic that we has come up off and onto our shore. And this is damaging not only the beach, but imagine the animals, the biodiversity that's impacted by all of this. That's why we're moving with me and our team and also with the environmental team towards the next phase mm -hmm. of the plastic ban and to ensure that we not only put in place laws and regulations, but every Jamaican must play your own individual role in putting down the plastic bottles. And if you have to use the plastic bottle, recycle. dispose of it in recycle. such a way recycle. that it is responsible and let us recycle. recycle. Look on the beach. Yes, Look on your beach as it relates to plastics. The defund, the, the deposit refund, refund scheme plastic. will be an incentive program where once you bring your plastics in, you should receive some remuneration. Uh, I'm hoping that that will be an incentive that can even create um, various tentacles of employment across the country. What I do want to do though, and I intend to do, is for the Climate Change Division and the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change to work with the Ministry of Industry and Commerce for us to see how we can create in that sphere the incentives for our entrepreneurs to see this sector as a viable sector. Many of them will need support in terms of the business plans and the technical expertise to build out and to get the equipment. That is where we will be having the major discussions to see how we can extract from our country uh, the potential and the innovation and the inventors uh, for Jamaica to see in rural and urban communities um, how, what the, the real impact and execution of sustainable development. Okay, and finally, um, I understand that you intend to be working more closely with the Met Office. Um, yeah. Can you just say what that partnership will look like? So the Meteorological Services falls within the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change. And one of the reasons why I have had a, a, a focus on the meteorological service is because it's important that our decisions are made on an empirical and scientific basis. So we are working with Evan Thompson and his team to make sure that they have the necessary equipment to provide early warning to the country. Already, we have seen lives saved because of the early warning equipment that has been put in place in, in, in spaces across Jamaica where they can track and know uh, based on the anticipated rainfall and projections to, to, to lock off a road or to give a particular warning and that has already saved lives. We will be bringing in very soon um, and introducing uh, some even higher level of technology. To, to raise our standard here in Jamaica in terms of how we make assessments of weather systems. The government has planned to remove some persons who they claim were informally settling on lands in Port Royal. We have resisted it. Um, I was very strident because the people that they were planning to, planning to remove were people who were born and grown up in Port Royal. And I do not believe that so the right thing to do, I think, would have been unconscionable. So I've been in discussion with Minister Vaz, and now that Minister Colonel Charles is the person in charge, I intend to continue those discussions to ensure that we can find suitable alternative accommodation where these people can be located. And in fact, those persons in Ishina, where they are, can be preserved for housing settlement. They are prepared to pay for it, and I'm prepared to work with the government to enable that to happen. Do you embrace an extension to this project? Of course. Uh, I think um, the reality of climate change is there. And I'm very happy that the Minister is taking this matter so seriously and is intent on ensuring that the success of this project can be even further developed. You know? So I'm very, very happy to be here with him. How important is this road to your constituency? Oh, well, it is important to Jamaica. It is the entrance and exit to the country for international business and tourists so it is crucial that it be preserved we remember during that horrific um, hurricane that passed through um, the airport was cut off and in fact my people in port royal um, were also badly badly affected so it's uh, a, a most important thoroughfare we're here on the cane river road 
what we see here is the devastation that arises from the impact of climate change. The intense and more frequent rainfall and what it can do to your road. You see all of the breakaway here and also danger to life and livelihood here in this community. This highlights the need for us to, not just to talk um, and talk about the agenda, but to move to action and to make sure that in how we build, in how we think, in what we do, resilience is at the forefront. I'm just speaking to Unami about the climate change resilience tool, a tool that will allow for us uh, to um, introduce in our contemplation for infrastructure development in the future the investment and risk relating to climate change and resilience. That's a tool that we are developing now um, at the Ministry of Housing, Urban Renewal, Environment and Climate Change through our Climate Change Division. Um, and that tool is something which we will be working with NWA to integrate into our future activities so that we can make sensible decisions on how we use our money, employ our resources and develop our policies. And today we are on this tour which we, we, we have dubbed our Impact and Solutions Tour. Um, we, we started this initiative about two years ago where we, we take our stakeholders, the Climate Change Focal Point, members of the board, members of the policymakers, the ministers, out in the, in, across the length and breadth of Jamaica to, to, to just look at the impacts of climate change, what can be ascribed to climate change, and some of the solutions that must be prescribed. Some of the people on these ones will tell you that the river take back its course because this is where the river used to be. And it is not practical for us to believe that we can constrain the river to a space so that it does not take its original course. So for those people who lived here before Wees Road was Weed Road, this name is actually from the Wees family. So one of the Wees is actually here today, one of the grandchildren. Watch your foot, watch your foot you. And they will tell you, this used to be the river course. What is happening is they are complaining that the river broke its bank where the NWA went over into the river to clean it. What's not so? It also broke its bank where you didn't enter it. So you're finding that what they used to have as a structure, which is the grind, people remove the stones from the grind. They use it to put into pits. So the walling that was generated can maintain. Yeah. 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 When the stones come out of the grind, this is this is the level of the grind here, you know. Look at the level of the grind. So what they've done is to basically dump silt on the side, which means one third of breaks all of this needs. Taylorland has water coming over from that side and then the rest of the top river water comes from up top all right so cane river water meeting water that comes down from Mavis Bank Rose's Valley coming down through to Vita Bloxborough coming down this side so all the silt ends up here all the silt ends up here well, ask, it is, is it is not going out no it's not the only silt that ends up here the, the, the gypsum would have also contributed to a portion of the silt here. I'm not really seeing gypsum stone when I look here, but more so when you go down to 10 miles. The material, you can see gypsum in that. I don't really, I've been checking chalk here, but I don't see much of it in here. But I believe it's a contributor as well. When you look at the width of the gully, even when we dug down and dug down and dug down, as the rain came, one day of rain, everything is full again. Everything was full after one day of rain. 
I ended up calling a lot of them and saying, please get off the bridge, get off the bridge. It is dangerous. So with the volume of water that we see and the amount of silt and material that is coming down from Garden Town, Mavistan, King Tile, it stands to reason that this is going to be challenging to maintain given climate change conditions. And it means that it is going to cost us a hundred times more to make an effort to protect life and property. And we may well not succeed because humans keep trying to challenge nature. We cannot. So the people who originated in Weez Road tell you, Weez Road was the riverbed. It is now stuck between riverbed, a road, and some houses. We have a challenge. Well, you put it well. You put it well. <laughs> when we move people from these spaces, the community does not take any responsibility in helping the police. So before you could somebody build another house in the same space that we move them from for their own safety. See this house? That's it. Behind there is Weasel Church. So hold on, the house wasn't like this? No. It's it's this this is where the river broke its back at the highest point. So all of this material we're looking at, this new, is a river. This is new material. This is new material. Oh, yeah. All of this is new material. Well, we're standing on. Yeah. What I've observed in the constituency is the, the situation changes when due to climatic conditions, we have continuous rainfall. Yeah. And, and you're going to have more of that. Right. And more, more intense continuous rainfall. Yes. So for, right. for the first time in many, many years, we have had consistent rain day after day for two weeks solid. And then you literally saw areas that didn't move before, just moving away. But that has been our concern. Okay. It literally changes the dynamics of the river overnight after you've had two days of heavy rain. A lot of the members of Wees Road say that it's the first in their life having experienced the water coming over its bank more than once that they have seen something like this with the army turning out not only to dig out the road but so much more helping them to dig out from their property and on behalf of the entire Wies Road community I want to express a heartfelt thank you from the bottom of my heart I thank you guys we would not have been able to achieve this without your contribution the speed at which you were, actually what it did, seeing the army sent a psychological message to even the contractors on duty that it is not business as usual and they needed to really push to work hard and get the place returned to normalcy. So I thank you ladies and gentlemen of the JDF.